In the NGPF financial algebra course, there are two types of lessons. There are personal finance geared lessons and there are math geared lessons. So within every unit, for example, unit 10, the personal finance side will be about insurance and it will be matched with content math wise about probability. You can tell the two lesson types apart by the white box here. So something like this, where it says counting principles here, you're going to see both a student activity packet and an application, and then the answer keys for both of them. Whereas a personal finance geared lesson is going to just have a student activity packet and its lesson guide. Let's take a look at one of those first. So you would click view student activity packet, which is the worksheet that you can give to students or modify or use in some other way. And you'll see at the top, the learning objectives, Every single lesson kicks off with an intro to just kind of introduce this, um, the concepts and also just kind of kick off your lesson like a bell ringer or a do now. And then throughout the lessons, you'll see learn it where the students learn some personal finance content. In this case, some intro to insurance ed puzzle questions. And then here you'll see the next resource for them to learn from is about deductibles and coverage limits and it is a series of two graphs so if you're familiar with the personal finance semester course the financial algebra lessons are um, similar format but have much more math infused into them as we scroll down you'll see that there's this explore it section where the students are actively doing something in this case it's an activity called move what determines your insurance premium and you'll see there's nothing for the students to click here and it just says to follow your teacher's instructions i'll show you on the lesson guide where you as the teacher would find that content then every personal finance lesson also has what we call a math connection, which is a math focused part of the personal finance lesson. So in this case, it's called you be the actuary and it's about counting principles, which is a topic they already learned about in this unit. And now they're applying it to being an actuary for life insurance policies. Finally, as we scroll down, each personal finance lesson has an exit ticket that you'll see that on the student facing version, they can't just immediately access that themselves. So let me show you where to find some of those missing resources. If we go back to the financial algebra page and then instead click view lesson guide, the lesson guide has a bunch of other features. We click there and then we open the lesson guide it opens as HTML so that um, we can keep our answer keys more secure. And you'll see that not only does it have the learning objectives that were on the student facing, but it also links out to Common Core math standards as well as the national standards for personal finance education. At the top, you'll also find a link to that same student facing SAP that we already looked at, the unit plan, and a few other helpful links. Then you'll see corresponding resource is the same as they looked on the student activity packet, but here answer keys are included. Please do not ever share answer keys with your students. Don't post them online, nothing like that. And you'll see here's the answers for the ed puzzle as well and the graph section. And then here's that activity. And you can see here that as the teacher, you can actually click the link and open this. It zooms you right to that same activity on our website where you can click and you can view the student doc, the Spanish version, if there is one for this activity, which there is, and the answer key for the activity itself. If I go back over here, you then see the answers for the math connection. And then here is the exit ticket at the bottom. The questions are printed out as well as highlighted read the answers. And then those are available to give to students as either a Google doc, here are the other lessons in this unit that are math facing. The math facing ones don't have exit tickets, but here's the one for 10.3 that we were just looking at. So here is the student version that you could give to your students somehow. And here are the answer keys. It's also available as a Google form. When you click there, it's going to prompt you to make your own copy of the Google form so that you can record your students' answers and it will self-grade. And that's basically the end of the lesson guide.